Hey everyone, I'm Kronos, and this is a tutorial on how to set up your game for Moist Critical's next speedrun challenge, which is speeding the game Exodus from the Earth on any difficulty as fast as possible. So make sure you get the correct version of the game to speedrun it. This is the Steam version. Um, Steam, it's $15. Uh, we will not allow different versions of the game because uh, different versions have different uh, parts of it that are changed up. So, for instance, the Russian version has its own category on the speedrun.com page, so we will be running the English version. So this is the game that we will be getting on Steam. I do not know if it's on other platforms, but yeah, I would just recommend going for this version of the game. For timing your speedrun, we're going to be downloading LiveSplit, which you can find at livesplit.org slash downloads. Just go to the latest download, which is this one, and then when you install it and have everything working, you should get this timer to appear. Next, we'll be setting up the load remover. So generally in LiveSplit, if you go to Edit Splits and you type in the game name, so in this case, Exodus from the Earth, can select it right here. Generally, if we have the auto splitter load remover implemented, we can just click activate right here. But unfortunately, we do not have it uh, integrated yet. But in the future, once we do implement it, just click activate right here, and it should automatically do the load remover for you. But in case we do not have it implemented by the time you're watching this video, here is how we do it manually. So under resources on the speedrun.com page, you can find the load remover tool. So what you do is once you download the load remover, you should be able to get this file, which is a .asl file when you download and extract everything. So once you have that downloaded, you go right click your uh, live split and then click edit layout. And under your layout editor, you want to click this plus button and go under control and scriptable auto splitter. So once you select that, double click this, the scriptable auto splitter, and you should be getting a script path right here click browse and go to that downloads folder where you have the uh, the ASL file, click it, open it, and that should make it so that your game will run with the auto splitter. And in case you are having these auto splitters, you want to make sure you're comparing it against your game time. And that'll make sure that the game time will be what's being recorded instead of the real time. Here, I'll demonstrate how the load remover works. Notice that the load remover will run even in menus, but it should not run while you're in a loading screen. So for instance, this loading screen, it did pause, but now that the load finished, when you can press a key to continue, the timer will run. So that is not, un not weird of a future. It's just how the auto splitter works. So for instance, if you want to quick save and quick load, the quick load will freeze the timer for a tiny bit because this game has very fast loads. But you can see the uh, load remover should be working properly if you have everything set up correctly. For people that are looking to find tricks or glitches in the game, there is some set saves that you can use that are provided from the previous runner. Uh, so if you go to this file under resources, you can download a bunch of saves and you can put the saves inside your current uh, saves directory, which you can find here at whatever your user documents, my games, Exodus default save. And you can just paste in the saves and you can see you can have basically as many saves as you want. And... Yeah, once you put the saves in and you can go into game, 
you can go click load game and you have all your save files right here that you can just select and load up and if you want to go to a different save file you can just very easily do that for speedruns of exodus from the earth we're going to set a max frame rate limit of 60 fps and the reason why is because the game has some weird things that go along with it if you try to set a different frame rate for your game. So to do this, uh, here's a tutorial for people with NVIDIA graphics cards. So you can go down to find your game in the NVIDIA control panel under program settings, and you want to select Exodus from the Earth, the exe file, and you want to find the max frame rate uh, setting and set it to 60 FPS. So I do not have a NVIDIA graphics card to demonstrate this, but this is how you would cap your frame rate for the game. To display the frame rate, uh, generally we would use the Steam in-game overlay, but unfortunately for this game it doesn't seem to work. If you have experience uh, with this working, uh, just let me know, but for me, it doesn't work. So I would recommend, if you do have a NVIDIA graphics card, to do it using your uh, GE Force experience. There should be an overlay for your FPS counter, which you can just display, and you should be able to record that in your OBS scene as well. Uh, if you do not have a NVIDIA graphics card, uh, I would recommend downloading Rivetuner. You can also download Rivetuner if you do have a NVIDIA graphics card and you want to do it this way. Uh, yeah, so for Rivetuner, we're going to go scroll down and download this version of Rivetuner at the bottom. So once you get Rivetuner working, you should have something that shows up like this. So here's Rivetuner, and you're going to click the Add button right here, and you're going to want to find this, uh, the Exodus from the Earth exe file, and you can find that in your Steam Apps common folder, which contains all your games. You're just going to want to select that file, and when you open it up, you just want to set this frame rate limit to 60 FPS and under show own statistics you want to make sure that is set to on and that is all you need to do and your game should be set to 60 FPS. Now I'll go over how to record your gameplay. So most people use OBS Studio to record their gameplay. You can use whatever streaming or recording software that you want, but most people will use OBS. So to do this, we're going to download whatever version. Once you get everything downloaded, you should get a screen like this to appear. So here, you're going to want to add your game under sources. Right now, I have my gaming running in the background. So you're going to want to click the plus button and go to game capture. And you're going to want to uh, capture a specific window. In this case, it's Exodus from the Earth. And once you do that, you can also capture third-party overlays if you want your Steam overlay added, but I don't believe it works once again. So once you add that and you have Exodus from the Earth, when you go back into the game, it'll take a little while to run but once you switch back to the main tab, you can see that your game is being recorded in the background right here. If you do have a second monitor, you can see it also running in the background. Right now it's a frozen screen since it's alt-tabbed. And to record your live split, you're going to want to add a window capture. And in this case, we want to add live split. So just select live split, and you should have live split, which you can drag around, move, whatever, and add it on the screen. If you want to make it transparent, you can go right click and add a filter. In this case, because the background is black, we're going to create a color key 
and make it a custom color. In this case, this is black and just change these values to make it transparent. And that should be all you need. You can add additional stuff to your stream layout or whatever, but that is all you need to record your gameplay. You can edit the settings of your stuff, including setting your stream. You can set your recording and streaming settings here. Make sure you have your audio selected. So this includes whatever headset and your microphone. Make sure you have that on there to make sure you have audio in your recording. So for instance, if you have default desktop audio, you'll have your desktop audio right here that'll play with the gameplay. So that should be all you need for recording. So once everything is working, when you boot up the game, you should have your rivet tuner or whatever FPS counter displayed. For instance, mine is right here. So you can see it's at 60 FPS. And I'm going to just go to settings and just make sure that all your settings are correct. So for video settings, uh, you'll often notice that when you boot up the game, it might look like very weird, very stretched out. Just make sure your aspect ratio, resolution, everything is proper can change whatever settings this game is pretty well optimized you shouldn't have any issues with the game running slowly in any way so that should all be good uh audio just make sure you do have some game sound because we do want to make sure that runs do have sound uh, game settings we can run the game on easy this game is very hard in general so even on the easy difficulty you can die very easily and yeah all these settings you can change to whatever for controls you can run the game on keyboard mouse or controller i run it on keyboard mouse and i do believe that this game is best played on keyboard and mouse uh you can see there's all sorts of actions that you can rebind and stuff uh from my experience with this game, I believe that uh, some important things to have for your keybinds and stuff and your mouse settings in general are your mouse sensitivity should be very low. But the thing is, you might want to have it be a little bit higher than you would like because of the driving sections in this game where your mouse sensitivity goes down by half for some reason so either use a dpi switch on your mouse or just use a mouse sensitivity that will allow you to drive normally and aim properly in the game but it will be kind of hard to get used to it for keybinds in general uh, this game feels like a source game so if you have speed ran games like half-life 2 or portal you should be used to options like bunny hopping and i believe bunny hopping is a possibility in this game i haven't tested it thoroughly but it does feel faster to bunny hop so maybe having a mouse wheel scroll for jump might be a good idea uh other things that are important a very important part is quick saving and quick loading so make sure these two are very easy to reach buttons for instance, I have these both on my side mouse buttons because you will be using quick saves and quick loads quite a lot in this speedrun to do some tricks. And what happens for a quick save and a quick load in this game is it basically saves the state of the game and you can load the state of the game basically instantly. They're, the load times are very quick, so there's no need to worry about stuff like that going on. For all the other stuff, just any keybinds that you're comfortable with, uh, yeah. It should be it for all the keyboard settings and just general game settings. Uh, for the game start, we're going to go click new game, and you can skip the cutscenes. It 
might seem like you can't skip some of these cutscenes, like this one right now, but after a certain point, when you mash space, it will skip, and your time will start once this first load screen right here, where the game save appears at the top of the screen. So that is when the game timer will start. Currently, the live split timer does not have an auto start and auto finish functionality, so you'll have to manually do it. And yeah. Time will end once you reach the final cutscene of the game. I do not have that on hand with me right now, but you will know it when you see it. And once you've seen a speedrun of the game. But yeah, that should be all for this brief tutorial. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and good luck with all your runs.